Welcome back to Frank. I'm Kat Davidson. My guests today are so beautiful, they have to work on radio to avoid people going blind <laughs> staring at them. <laughs> Richard Feidler hosts of Conversations, mostly nationwide, and Kelly higgins Devine, host of Afternoons. And we learned something about you uh, just before the break, Kelly mm. higgins Devine, that you, you can read tarot. Is there anything else spooky about you we should know? Um, oh, no. I, uh, and, uh, we've sort of had you know this this conversation before that do you do you tap into the unknown or are you just good at reading people and i think after a while especially with what we do you get good at reading people so i don't think it comes from a spooky place i think it just comes from a place of being able to watch body language and and understand the nuance of what people say and don't say i agree i think i think my theory is that tarot cards is like reading tea leaves or numerology it's it's a it's a matrix that the conscious mind can sort of glom onto and get distracted by. Mm. So the subconscious mind can tell you what it already knows. Yeah. And what happened to you, which is of a, a spooky nature, Richard, is something that's it's quite difficult to find another explanation for. Can you, can you take us back in time? We, I can. Uh, in the, the mid-90s, my wife and I, before we had kids, we moved to Sydney and moved into Forbes Street in Darlinghurst, where there's now the National Arts School. And the National Arts School is built on what was the first colonial jail in Sydney. It's one of the oldest buildings remaining in Sydney. And we moved into a flat that was part of the, what was once the administration block there. And our flat was on the ground floor. It was a pretty scungy area. Um, it was kind of like the, the, the Leather Queen central district of Sydney. Um, there were a lot of drug conversations we'd hear in the middle of the night outside our window. Um, on one occasion we heard someone say, I don't want to hear about your sad and pathetic life. I've got a sad and pathetic life of my own. <laughs> <laughs> Overheard conversations were kind of fabulous in that area. Now that's Frank. That is Frank. <laughs> on, one, on, on one occasion and over time, I discovered that our front door was open. And I should explain a bit about the architecture. Like most apartment blocks in Sydney, there was a door on the street with an iron security door. To get to our apartment, you had to go through the iron door, the big wooden door beyond it. There was a hallway and our front door was there inside the hallway, like on the ground floor of an apartment. I would go out for coffee in the morning, come back and find our front door open. I'd go inside and think I'd been burgled, but there was nothing missing, nothing moved at all. I think, oh, I must have been stupid and left the, the door open. And then it happened again. And then a couple of days later, it happened again. Are you a forgetful guy normally? Uh, it can be, but not that forgetful. Mm -hmm. And I was taking care to close the door, but it was happening again and again. I thought, well, there must be some sort of a catch with the door, and I was making sure it was closed. And after a couple of weeks of this, I got talking with Kim, my wife, one night, and she said, the same thing's been happening to me. I've been going out, sure I've left the door, closed the door, but coming in and finding it open. And when I come back, nothing's moved, nothing's taken, nothing's different. It's just that the door's open. So one morning together, on a Saturday morning, we went out for coffee, we made a big show, laughing, of grabbing the door, closing it shut, like really pushing against it to make sure it wasn't clipping up. Went out for coffee, came back, the door was open. The next week I came home, the door was open, I walked in, and the mail was out of the mailbox from the front of the house and in the middle of the living room floor. And there was some bustling, I just, you know how it is when you know when someone's home? That's how it was. And so I thought, oh, well, Kim's come home, she's hot and tired, she just dropped the mail in the middle of the living room. So I started talking to her in the kitchen. And after a little while, I, I realized that she wasn't home. There was no one home at all. I had no idea how that mail got into the middle of the living room. And so that night we were washing up the dishes I'm talking about this and like I said my wife always knows what to say and do in these circumstances she doesn't believe in ghosts but what she did was she put down the kind of the, the dishcloth and went looked up to and said to the roof or to no one in particular look you're welcome to stay just don't freak us out after that no more problem you never felt another presence in the house there was uh, not after that but there was a, a presence in the house but it wasn't scary it was benign, whatever it was. It wasn't a bad thing. Later on, a couple of years later, we had an encounter in a hotel in the Blue Mountains, which was a bad thing, and that was a wholly different experience, that was. Please tell me about that. We went to say, see some friends who just moved up to the Blue Mountains, and we stayed in this spooky, big hotel in Katoomba. And, and it was a real pile, and straight away just sort of set our teeth on edge, and we started calling it the Overlook Hotel, you know, like in The Shining. <laughs> you know? Was it the kind of thing, as soon as you pulled up to it, you're like, Ooh. You went, yeah, mm. bad vibe straight yeah. away. And I don't believe in vibes, but I got a bad vibe off it. Um, there's a strange inconsistency to what I'm saying. I know, but that's how it was. Anyway, we went out to dinner, had a lot of fun, had a bit too much to drink, which may have affected our 
uh, perception of what had happened that night. Got home quite late, and as we got we're walking at midnight or thereabouts through the corridor towards our room, something bad hit us. I don't know what it was, but there was a sense of airlessness and coldness, and it was a bad vibe. I didn't say anything, Kim didn't say anything. We got into our room, <laughs> in bed there, and there was this sound of something dragging outside the window, this dragging noise. Were you ground floor? No. <laughs> and, um, and it just wasn't a good thing, and so we, we, didn't, we didn't say anything. And then there was this kind of awful, awful wail, this horrible wail. Now, again, this could be anything. This could be sexual malpractice in the next room. I don't know. <laughs> Someone has seen too much porn. But both of us would have went, Jesus Christ, like that after that happened. And so I got up, got dressed, went down to the, uh, the, the, front, the front desk, and the guy, <laughs> the guy was standing by. It was like the kind of Simpsons Halloween special. The guy behind it actually had a desk lamp that was sort of uplighting his face. <laughs> oh, can I help yes, you, sir? sir? Like that. Yes, sir. And I said, we're in room 18, and we're hearing stuff, and we really need to get out of that room. And he said, I understand entirely, sir. Gave us the keys to another room, which was fine. So no questions. He wasn't at all no, surprised. He was, no, oh, 18, of no, course. No, that's right. It was like, oh, that room, get out of there. Now, the whole of the Blue Mountains has, I think, a slightly odd feel to it. Yes. Um, here we are talking about intangible things, which I don't believe in, but this is what happened nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of hotels are haunted because terrible things happen in them. You know, people die, awful things, terrible sex happens uh, yes. in hotels. <laughs> and I think that kind of thing can haunt you for a long time. Oh, it's traumatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whale. It's the, <laughs> in the middle of the night. Last time uh, Stav and I stayed in a hotel, lovely hotel, quite an expensive one, it was a gift. And uh, as soon as we sat down on the bed, and I do mean, I'm not, that's not a euphemism, we actually just sat down on the bed. It went, eh, eh. <laughs> Like owl, you mean? <laughs> just the, it was so squeaky. All right. That it was just, but just the, the weight of two people just sitting. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was one of those ones where we saw the, we happened to come out of the doors at the same time as one of the neighbours. And we were like, that is not what, what you, you think, think it is. is. <laughs> so they were like, sure, yeah. sure. Perhaps it should be. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, if you're going to be done for the crime, you might as well do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's it. You wouldn't even get in the bed. We're just sitting on the bed, everyone. <laughs> you might as well just do what you're going to do. So do you think you will ever be haunted again, Richard? Is this something that follows you or do you think it's just... No, because I live in Brisbane now and Brisbane doesn't have any ghosts. It's too sunny and pleasant. Mm. You can't have ghosts in Brisbane. No. You sound disappointed. It's like, it, you know, it, it's, Brisbane's too much, of a, too much of a disco. It's not punk rock enough to have ghosts, I don't think. It's not gothic enough. No. I know you were, mm. you were a goth once in your 20s and you, you struggled mightily. And I always admired <laughs> goths in Brisbane. I, I mean, because it was something case. so perverse mm. about being a goth in Brisbane. <laughs> yep. But uh, I don't think the, uh, the, the, the spiritual world has quite the same um, commitment that you did to the, the whole mm. goth spooky. I'm well, dead there you are, Brisbane ghosts thing. of Brisbane. The challenge has been set down by one Richard Feidler. If you've got some Hortons to give, bring them. Shut up. <laughs> Go get him. Let's find out if he really is superstitious. Sitting next to him patiently upon the couch with a tale to tell that will definitely make those little hairs on the back of your neck stand up is one Kelly Higgins Divine. We're back to hear that tale in just a few minutes.